Well, uh, Martin McGuinness was here this afternoon, obviously off the back of not just a uh, number of nights uh, of trouble here uh, in the round of short strand, but I suppose they take it in the broader context the last couple of months. You know, this community has just come through three months of illegal flag protests being inflicted upon it. Uh, countless breaches of uh, Parades Commission determinations in, in relation to loyal order uh, flag uh, protests and uh, ordinary run-of-the-mill protests. Uh, on Friday night here as the return period made its way back uh, into East Belfast, uh, you had a series of stoppages by bands out the front of these homes um, playing sectarian uh, songs, engaging in sectarian chanting uh, and that obviously then led to the initial attack uh, on this community. Now that has been verified by the PSNI, that has been verified to me and other senior figures within uh, Sinn Féin. Uh, in relation uh, to what actually instigated the violence uh, on Friday. Uh, last night there was obviously an open of the ante with uh, five blast bombs being thrown at these homes uh, in Stramwalk and you can see here uh, and I've shown uh, before the nature of these homes they're uh, adopted bungalows primarily for people with disabilities for elderly people uh, after the patrol bombs and blast bombs last night we had to uh, install uh, a number of hoses uh, here in order to try and help protect the homes because obviously there is issues here not just in terms of the veracity of the attack but also uh, the attacks but also in terms of uh, access from uh, the emergency services as well so I mean I suppose the reality in the summer of 2013 is this is no way for people to live people shouldn't uh, be forced to live like this not least uh, I have the odd uh, pensioners in our community, you know, the most vulnerable in our community, the people who we hold in highest esteem uh, in our community and have come through, you know, too many years of conflict uh, in this community. So, you know, it's high time that this uh, area uh, was no longer seen within loyalism, within unionism as its whipping boy, because it never has been and I don't think there's any appetite for it to allow it to be that now. But in order for that to stop, we have to hear a clear message from not least the First Minister uh, to say that that's wrong, say the attacks uh, on the, this community are wrong and need to stop. The First Minister took to Twitter very, very quickly uh, on the 12th of July to blame this uh, community and to demonise this community. I think that was very, very irresponsible. I think that showed poor judgement on his part. Uh, and I actually think it stands in stark contrast to his complete silence in relation to three months of flag protests, two UVF attacks uh, on this community. So what we need to do, as I've said, is we need to sit down, we need to engage, we need to uh, hold those leaders within the Orange Order, not least Mervyn Gibson, who is a church leader just two minutes up the road. He's a neighbour of these people. He has a responsibility to these people as a neighbour to ensure that his words aren't as inflammatory, uh, aren't as dangerous uh, and aren't as reckless as we've seen uh, and heard from him last week. Well, well I came to Short Strand because I went to the Ardoin area on Saturday and I wanted to come here because obviously the people of Short Strand are a small, isolated, nationalist Catholic community and uh, they bear the brunt of all sorts of problems and difficulties every year. Not just one, two or three parades, but dozens of parades, uh, all of which create huge tension in the area and uh, provide opportunity for those who wish to further heighten tension to attack the homes of the people who live here. And on my travels around, I've, I've seen the evidence of the uh, devices that were thrown into the area uh, by loyalists over the course of the last uh, couple of days. The children are running around with them in their hands. Uh, obviously the device has exploded and they've got the rem remnants of it. So it's an intolerable situation that it calls out for uh, a, an agreed way forward on the whole issue of parades. And we've just come from the assembly today where we had a, a debate about this matter. But, you know, for me on the issue of parades, the uh, example for resolving this is very simple. It's what happened in my own city over 10 years ago whenever the Loyal Orders, the business community, the Bogside Residents Association, supported by the political parties and the community and voluntary sector, all came together to work out a solution. And sure, anybody looking at the Orange Parade in Derry uh, last Friday uh, would see uh, a parade that had no opposition, no protests, uh, whatsoever and uh, an absolute willingness on behalf of the people of Derry City to respect the right of the Orange Order to parade but it all comes down to how you do that and I think where we've got it right in Derry uh, if you look at Belfast it's all wrong because we haven't developed a scenario with an Orangeism where they're prepared to recognise that they should be in terms of promoting their own culture doing it in a, a respectful way you know last Tuesday 
myself and the other four party leaders in the assembly agreed a statement which talked about the need for people to abide by the determination of the Parades Commission and to be involved only in peaceful uh, approaches to the marching season. The following day, the DUP jumped on the bed with the Orange Order, who were absolutely determined to up the ante and crank up the situation. And as a result of all of that, we've seen the violence uh, that ensued. So the message clearly is that uh, political unionism needs to get the grips uh, with what is happening. Uh, they need to be in a driving seat, but they need to be in a driving seat with a positive message. One, I suppose, chink of light today was Sammy Wilson's contribution in the Assembly, where he clearly identified uh, the problem and the failure to resolve this issue two years ago, when a determined effort was made by both Peter Robinson and myself, pointed the finger of blame directly at the Orange Order and directly at the former leader of the Ulster uh, Unionist Party, uh, Tom Elliott. So I think, you know, what we need is a re-engagement of dialogue and discussion. People coming into a room, respecting one another, but with a real desire to work out compromises which will see everybody live in peace. Uh, that's what happened in Derry. Hasn't happened so far in Belfast. It needs to happen here.